and welcome to the University of Lausanne. I'm Sophie Martin, I'm an associate professor here at the Department of Microbiology. And I'm Libera, a PhD student in Sophie's lab. Today we would like to give you a little introduction into our recent paper in current biology. So let's go to the lab. Our lab is interested in the mechanisms by which cells acquire and maintain their shape because particular cell shapes underlie cell function. Shape is largely determined by the cytoskeleton, internal filamentous structures that form networks inside the cell. To study these questions, we use a simple eukaryotic model organism, the fusion yeast Schizosaccharomyces pombi. This is a unicellular fungus which exhibits regular cell shape. It acquires its shape by growing exclusively by polar extension, thus increasing in length through the cell cycle, but keeping a constant diameter. How is this polarized growth achieved? In this and almost all cell types, there are two major types of cytoskeletal networks, the actin and the microtubule cytoskeleton. These provide force for cell rearrangements. They also serve as tracks for the directed delivery of cargoes to sites of action in the cell. This is accomplished by molecular motors that convert ATP energy into forward motion and bind specific cargoes through their C-terminal tails. Kinesins work on microtubules, myosins along actin filaments. In fission yeast, the actin cytoskeleton underlies polarized cell growth. This consists in interface cells of two main structures, actin patches, which are sites of endocytosis, and actin cables, which form long bundles of actin filaments that extend through the cell. These cables are used by type 5 myosin to transport growth components to cell extremities. In the absence of actin cables or type 5 myosin, polarized growth is then partly compromised. One cargo we identified is YPT3, a RAB11 homologue. YPT3 travels along actin cables. Consequently, disruption of actin structures with the drug latrunculine A blocks YPT3 movements and accumulation at cell tips. Microtubules also extend to cell tips, but are not essential for polarized growth. The main function for cell polarity is to transport a set of landmarks to cell poles to mark them as sites of growth. Thus, fission yeast cells have two cytoskeletal elements polarized towards the same cellular region. We ask the question of whether one could substitute for the other. We designed a chemic motor fusing the motor domain of a kinesin T2 to the cargo binding domain of class 5 myosin. When expressed in cells lacking functional kin cables, the chimera should be able to target the tips myosin 5 cargos in a microtubule dependent manner. And you can see here the chimera in green working on microtubules and localizing at the tips of the cell. And this is the chimera localizing at the tips with myosin 5 cargo YPT3. Complete this assembly of actin by electronic treatment does not affect chimera and YPT3 co-localization at the tips, whereas microtubule disassembly by MBC treatment disrupted uh, tip localization. Thus, we have rerouted actin based transport along microtubules. Remarkably, the chimera is functional to restore polarized growth. In contrast to wild type cells, myo5 delta cells are really round and grow really poorly. Upon expression of the chimera, they regain an elongated uh, shape and they grow as well as wild type. Thus, fission yeast cells do not care what route their cargo takes. All that counts is the destination at cell poles. This study shows that cytoskeleton is extremely plastic and that cells can adapt to an entirely new mode of transport. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy the paper.